Hello viewers, welcome to my channel ITJ Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish. So, uh, one of my students had requested me to do a video on uh, Pathfinder Challenge Problem 2 Electric Current. Uh, this problem is about proving something and uh, you don't have to solve for any expression but you have to prove some result or some proportionality and uh, uh, some hint is given pathfinder for this problem so generally what happens students just read that hint and uh, then do not think any further on this problem that's what happens with uh, uh, people sometimes so uh, but uh, i felt that uh, there's uh, something to be explained in this problem that's why i decided to choose this one so let's look at the problem in the arrangement shown a pulley suspended from a fixed support with help of a spring so this is a pulley and this is a spring which is supporting this okay a uniformly re uniform resistive wire connected between immovable terminals a and b passes over the pulley a resistance r is connected between the terminals a and b is also connected in parallel with the resistive wire so this wire is passing over the pulley and uh, then this r is also connected directly between a and b and question doesn't uh, mention explicitly and that's why it leaves some doubt in the minds of uh, students actually uh, this question should mention that this wire doesn't have any resistance is directly connected like that okay uh, so but uh, that's not written explicitly in the question okay so uh, passing on pulley a resistance r connected between terminals a a and b is also connected in parallel with the resistive wire so it says it's parallel but in what sense is it parallel actually uh, this is connected like this between a and b and this is also connected but strictly speaking since there is a branching out over here so we cannot really say that this is a parallel connection so that's why uh, i think that language needs a lot of refinement in this question okay uh, that's how i am interpreting this problem maybe there exists some alternate interpretations i don't know so uh, okay uh, resistance R of the resistive wire is much larger than the load resistance. So this resistance is very very large as compared to the load resistance which is also much larger than R. So this is a small resistance and this is a large resistance and this is a very large resistance. Okay. The spring supporting the pulley always keeps the resistor, resistive wire taut. So why he is talking about uh, the spring because uh, as these wires heat up there will be some thermal expansion and uh, then the, the, there will be some uh, loose string available and that has to be tightened because of the spring okay always keeps the resistive wire taut the pulley the wheel and its axle are made of conducting materials to establish electrical contact of the resistive wire with the terminal c so uh, all these pulleys and all these things are uh, conducting and uh, there's some connection going to the point c okay electrical contact of the resistive wire with the terminal c when the switch is closed the pulley wheel starts rotating very gradually and stops rotating after some time so what happens when you close the switch this pulley wheel will start rotating and then the rotation will stop after some time and we have to explain why does the pulley wheel rotate and why does it stop after some time so that's part a of the question we have to explain the cause of this rotation and then the second part is show that the angular displacement of the disc is approximately proportional to power consumed by the resistance RL. You have to tell that, okay, the amount through which uh, this uh, pulley wheel is rotating is proportional to the power consumed in RL. Of course, power consumed in RL will depend on the battery. So we have to, that means what, uh, if we increase the battery here, the voltage, then uh, this uh, angle by which the pulley rotates will also increase. And we have to show that this uh, angle through which it uh, turns is proportional to the this load resistance RL. Okay. So if you want, you can try out this problem. Uh, you have to prove uh, the proportionality and see how you utilize the principles of physics in doing this one. And uh, if you want, you can directly have a look at my analysis and I'll get into my analysis right away. So let's see what's happening. So. Uh, According to the question, what is given that resistance of EF, so this wire has got, uh, this, it was not mentioned but I said that this should be re either resistanceless wire or having a very low resistance just for establishing an electrical contact. So that's probably what they mean by establishing the electrical contact, okay. And this resistance is very small and uh, this is a large resistance so 
uh, by symmetry this resistance should be r by 2 this resistance should also be small r by 2 uh, because of symmetry because uh, these two tensions must be equal uh, the same strain going over or you can say conducting strain the wire as okay and this is a very high resistance and this is a low resistance path available so what will happen suppose i1 is the current going here this i1 has to split through this path and this path so you know that uh, since this is a without resistance path available whereas from this path the current has to encounter this huge resistance rl so that's why uh, most of the current is going to pass through the upper branch and accordingly uh, and i2 is going to be very small as compared to the current going through the upper branch because that's the path of very less resistance okay so that means what this i1 and i2 are unequal and i1 is larger than i2 and that's why there will be uh, unequal and uh, asymmetric power uh, dissipation in the branch ae you can say if you want or you can if you want to call it ad or ae whatever in branch ae power dissipation is more than the power dissipation in branch eb and accordingly higher i square r heating would lead to greater thermal expansion in the left side as compared to the thermal expansion in the right hand side and uh, since the thermal expansion is not equal so as this expands and this expands so for equal distribution of lengths on both sides some length must pass over the pulley from left side to the right hand side okay so some wire is getting uh, passed from left side to right side and uh, if it is moving without slipping on the pulley then it will rotate the pulley for some time okay uh, so that's why this pulley is rotating but what will happen after some time when this wire gets heated up and this wire gets heated up because of that heating up this will start losing heat to the atmosphere according to newton's law of cooling and then some steady state temperature will be achieved okay and once the steady state temperature is achieved then there's no more further thermal expansion and uh, the system stabilizes at some steady state and the pulley has already turned through some angle theta and doesn't turn any further so that's how the physics of it is working out and uh, now we have to talk about the proportionality part so let me read what i've written uh, whatever i've explained since the resistance of efc is much less than rl efc this branch is much less than this rl i2 must be smaller than i1 so this current is smaller than i1 therefore power generation in ae is greater than the power generation in eb therefore thermal expansion of a is greater than that in eb this thermal expansion is greater than this thermal expansion therefore some length must pass over the pulley so as to keep the string taut and the uh, tensions are equal I, that's what i meant to say tensions are equal on both sides i'm suffering from dyslexia probably <laughs> are equal on both sides okay hmm. Uh, I don't know dyslexia something else okay so tensions are equal on both sides now let delta L1 and delta L2 be the elongations in the wires carrying current I1 and I2 so let's say delta L1 is the elongation corresponding to this length and delta L2 is the elongation corresponding to this length okay uh, carrying currents I1 and I2 respectively then final length on both sides of the pulley will be how much so total available length becomes now L2 L plus delta L1 plus delta L2 right and that length has to be distributed equally on both sides so this let us say this is l prime and this is also l prime so then l prime is simply 2 l plus delta l1 plus delta l2 divided by 2 that's basically the total length uh, new length expanded length divided by 2 on both sides okay now uh, had there been no transfer of length from left side to the right side length on the rhs would have been l plus delta l2 so, see this elongation is delta l2 and l is already present here so if, if we do not transfer any string from left side to the right hand side this length would be l plus delta l2 but actual length is this so that means how much length has passed from left side to the right side so we will just subtract what would have been the length had there been no transfer from the actual final length that's available on the right hand side if you do that and uh, let's say theta is the angle through which pulley has turned in the process so since it is not slipping so the length that is transferred from left side to right side can be written as a theta if a is the radius of the pulley and theta is the angle through which it turns then the thread it passes from one side to the other is simply a into theta so that's what i've written a into theta is equal to l dash minus lr so l dash is this length and lr is this one and you subtract them 
so here a is the radius so let me write here a is the radius of the pulley radius of pulley and theta is the angle through which pulley has turned okay angle turned by the pulley turned by the pulley so i hope you understood this equation so a so this is the angle through which uh, the pulley turns and therefore theta is simply delta l1 minus delta l2 divided by 2a and delta l1 is nothing but l alpha delta t so delta l1 is l alpha delta t1 and delta l2 is l alpha delta t2 where alpha is the quotient of thermal expansion so this is the angle here delta t1 and delta t2 are temperature increases in the lhs and the rhs sections so uh, this is the lhs section and this is the rhs section and temperature difference temperature uh, differences or temperature increases are delta t1 and delta t2 so i hope equation 4 is clear now let p1 and p2 be the powers being dissipated in lhs and rhs then using newton's law of cooling see whatever is the power being supplied must be equal to the power being dissipated in the steady state and let's say proportionality constant in newton's law of cooling is c so then p1 is c delta t1 and p2 is c delta t2 and uh, now i can write uh, this equation in terms of p1 and p2 because i can substitute for delta t1 so this becomes then uh, so uh, theta then uh, becomes the angle through which pulley has turned becomes l alpha by 2 ac into p1 minus p2 okay uh, just delta t1 is p1 by c and delta t2 is p2 by c so p1 and c and p2 and this one c okay now let uh, pl be the power dissipated in rl so in this resistance power dissipated is rl so you know that uh, by kirchhoff law the currents in a circuit they are directly proportional uh, they, they maintain a co constant of proportionality the ratio of currents does not depend on the value of battery even the absolute currents depend on the value of the voltage of the battery but the ratios of currents does not depend on that and therefore power dissipated in any resistor is uh, the ratio of powers dissipated in any resistor are also not dependent on the absolute value of the uh, voltage of the battery they will just be proportional uh, there will be some proportionality constant so power dissipated in rl is proportional to this power and this uh, and also this power is also proportional to this although proportionality constants may be different okay so uh, let pl be the power dissipated in rl then p1 and p2 must also be proportional to pl because currents will be in a particular ratio so let's say p1 is k1 times pl and p2 is k2 times pl here k1 and k2 are some constants which will depend on the ratios of the resistances various resistances in the circuit okay they are appropriate proportionality constants so just use this equation seventh equation in sixth and what do you get you get uh, uh, theta is equal to l alpha upon 2 ac into k1 minus k2 into pl so what do we see the angle through which the uh, pulley turns is directly proportional to the power dissipated in the uh, resistor rl okay and that's what we had to prove and uh, we have proved that here uh, i ignored the change in resistances uh, slight change in resistances because of passing of length from one side to the other side and uh, also uh, why because uh, the question said that it's approximately proportional to pl so uh, why do we are why are we saying the word approximate because uh, we have ignored the change of resistances on the left side and right side because of slight transfer but then those numbers are small and we can uh, safely ignore them and that's why um, the word approximately so this is what was to be proved and we proved it so that's my analysis of this question uh, hope you like this video and if you did like this video please uh, do give it a thumbs up and please share this video as much as possible through various whatsapp groups telegram groups or uh, discord servers or whatever uh, media you use for networking with your fellow students preparing for iit j or olympiads and uh, most importantly if you have not already subscribed to my channel please do subscribe to my channel because uh, that's what keeps me motivated uh, to post new uh, videos thanks a lot for watching this video please keep coming back to my channel for more awesome stuff and uh, i'll see you in the next video and uh, god bless you all